Welcome to Beethoven Cello Bration. My name is Jennifer Kletzel, and I'm Professor of Cello and Head of Strings at UC Santa Barbara. Members of my cello class, also known as the UCSB Cello Squad, have chosen selections from Beethoven's music for piano and cello to perform in celebration, or cellobration, of Beethoven's 250th birthday this past December. While considering plans for this event, I realized early on how unlikely it was for us to be able to perform in concert in person. So I figured it was a good opportunity for us to challenge ourselves creatively. For this concert, you will not see any of the pianists on camera, but do know that these are very much chamber works between equal partners. And I thank our four excellent pianists for their hard work and wonderful playing. The collection of works that Beethoven wrote for piano and cello shows the many sides of his personality and creating the emotions behind these pieces was vital to the work the students and I have been doing. Our aim is to move beyond simple cello technique and find the humanity and emotions that lie within this music. To this end, we met with digital artist Tyler Scrivener in February to discuss commissioning backdrop designs for our pieces. Our initial conversations required that the students describe the images or ideas or stories behind the pieces that they were playing, and Tyler began to create vision boards for each piece. Then each cellist was able to respond and request changes to color, landscape, or mood to better demonstrate their ideas. You will hear more about that from each of the cellists. This year has forced us all to be more flexible and nimble and to try new things. Thanks for watching our little experiment and welcome to Beethoven Celebration. Hi, my name is Ivan Law, and I will be playing the first movement of Beethoven's last cello sonata. Unlike other works by Beethoven, he had nothing to model off of when writing his sonatas for cello and piano. It was only during this period that the cello had begun to take on a role outside of the traditional basso continuo. The last of his sonatas to be completed, Beethoven's sonata for cello and piano number no. five, is known to explore the territories covered by the composer's late string quartets. The D major sonata was written during Beethoven's late period of music as, as a farewell to Joseph Linke, a cellist, composer, and close friend of Beethoven. He took part in the performances of Beethoven's string quartets as well as other chamber works involving the cello for the first time. The first movement of the sonata opens triumphantly and quickly with no slow section as it is marked allegro con brio. The pace is kept throughout. The piece reminds me of the awakening of spring once the snow has fully melted. Animals are just emerging from their nests to endure the warmth that was brought with the new season. Life springs back in full force and begins to flourish. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm going to be playing Beethoven's Second Sonata. Um, I really like it because it's his only minor sonata and it's really dramatic.
Hello, my name is Naomi Studley, and I will be playing the first movement from Beethoven's Sonata No. 3 in A major for piano and cello, Opus 69. Beethoven actually helped pave the way for the cello to be a solo instrument by placing the piano and cello on equal footing in the sonata. For example, the sonata includes virtuosic flourishes from both instruments, and many of these flourishes take advantage of the full range of the instruments. In the third sonata, you'll also hear Beethoven's musical hallmark, which is contrast. So that includes contrast in the form of articulations and dynamics. You'll hear soft, soaring, legato melodies, followed by aggressive, marcato eighth notes. You'll also hear beautifully tapered phrases, followed by fortissimo unison lines. These unexpected moments enable Beethoven's musical ideas to paint pictures in our heads. Thanks to Tyler, we were able to bring a faster quality of sound to life. The way that I think about this sonata is that it's dark and tragic with interjecting moments of sunshine and hope. I encourage you to come up with your own interpretation while you listen. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Britta, and today I'm performing the second movement from Beethoven's very first cello sonata. This is an F major, and it's pretty early in his career. It's opus five. My favorite part about playing this movement is the interchange between piano and cello. Um, it being a rondo, there's all these different themes getting passed back and forth, and the way Beethoven writes is just so charming and eloquent. Um, it's like this little game that the cello and piano are playing back and forth throughout the whole movement. So um, it's been a lot of fun to play with the piano part, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Hannah, and I will be concluding our program with Beethoven's theme and seven variations from Mozart's famous opera, The Magic Flute. Published in 1802, Beethoven developed a particular interest in one aria from Act One of uh, The Magic Flute between the characters Pamina and Papageno. These two characters are singing about love and everything that it brings to their lives, the good and the bad. And I love how Beethoven represents that in, these theme, in this theme and variations because they're not all so happy. They're all very, they each have their own little character and their own little description of love. And I really love that. So <laughs> enjoy.
Thank you.